So back in the day, whenever I used to lose body fat, I would end up with not my ideal glute size. They would end up a little bit more in the pancake department. This happened because there were a lot of mistakes that I was making. And the thing is, these mistakes are very, very common. And I don't think anybody really wants the pancake booty look. Nothing wrong with it. But if you're trying to prevent it, there are a bunch of things that you can make sure you're not doing. So in this video, I am going to tell you you all about it. So tip number one is don't lose body fat too fast because extreme approaches result in extreme disappointment. In terms of maintaining glutes, if you're losing body fat really quickly, you'll also lose muscle mass. And guess what your glutes are? Muscle and fat. So if you're losing fat, but you're also losing muscle due to losing the fat too quickly, we are not getting into a good situation over here. What you wanna do is slow down the fat loss so you can maintain or even build your glutes. Tip number two is eat enough protein. This kind of builds off the last point. Protein allows you to build and maintain muscle. When you're in a caloric deficit, it puts you in a place where it's easier to start losing muscle. So it's very, very important that you're eating enough protein. As I said in the last tip, the reason you wanna be maintaining the muscle is because, ow, it hit my elbow. Because that's gonna help you maintain your glutes. So, so to help you hit your protein goals easier, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite quick and easy protein sources. Okay, so my number one favorite protein source, eggies. I love having eggies eggs, obviously, with a large portion of egg whites mixed in because, ah, oh, my egg whites. It's such a quick, easy way to hit your protein goals. And it's very versatile. You can have wraps, you can have toast. And this is what I do. So I'll make like a giant omelet type thing. Apparently it's not actually an omelet, but I'll make it on the stove in like a giant pan. And then I'll put egg whites and eggs and diced veggies. And then I'll eat half of it for breakfast with toast. And then I'll eat this other half later with either more toast or in a wrap. Bam, I'll put on the screen how, screen how much protein this is. It's quite a bit. Boxers. Okay, so tuna is another favorite and I love getting different flavored cans. And we have little Baxter, he's very interested in the tuna. So there's lots of different flavors. There's the sun-dried tomato basil, there's lemon and pepper, there's like a Thai chili. You could just have more variety. And again, this can go in multiple different meals as well. So it doesn't always feel like you're eating the same thing. So another all-time favorite protein source is Greek yogurt. I get a vanilla, fat-free Greek yogurt. You can make so many different macro-friendly, healthy desserts with this, so it's really awesome. I love it. Sometimes I'll add these little cups to it. I prefer to add just like frozen fruit, a bunch of fun toppings, but these can kind of be a nice little on-the-go snack as well. So protein powder is another favorite protein source of mine because it's super quick, super easy. You can get different flavors. You can make smoothies. The options are plentiful. And protein is very key. You want to eat anywhere from 0.7 grams to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now keep in mind that that's still like a broad guideline for protein intake. I'll have sometimes clients go under that. Some people will go over. So it's not like you gotta be in that exact range. It's just kind of like a ballpark starting point like a lot of things because everybody is so different. Okay, and tip number three is to prioritize compound movements. Now, in a little bit, I'm gonna show you some examples of compound movements. The compound movements are the cake and the isolation movements are the icing on the cake. So you, you don't want one without the other. They're very, very important to include. The next tip, tip number four, is to focus on consistently getting stronger with these exercises. Now, I know people may think, oh my gosh, my gym is closed, I'm working out at home. I don't have much equipment. How am I going to get stronger? I'm going to lose my glutes. But do not worry. When 
I say get stronger, I don't just mean adding weight. There's a lot of things you can do and I'm going to show you those as well because it's very important and it's actually crazy. The little things that you implement can make an exercise that's pretty light that you would typically think is gonna be easy. You can make it feel a lot more difficult and that's just gonna help you maintain the glutes while losing weight, even if you're working out at home. Now we are going to go over some examples of compound movements. And then I'm also gonna tell you ways you can increase the difficulty if you are working out from home right now and you don't have a lot of equipment. So compound movement example, number one is squats. If you do not have much weight to add, here are some things that you can do that will make the exercise feel more difficult because it's gonna increase the time under tension. So you can add a pulse to your squat. You can add a pause to your squat. Obviously you can add extra bands. I've done squats with two bands before, which actually makes them crazy difficult. You can obviously go quite high rep. In the gym, I might just stick to like eight to 10, but here you might have to do like 20, 30, who knows? The key is that you're pushing yourself close to failure. And then also squeeze like crazy. When you don't have access to much weight, just think of squeezing and engaging all of your muscles as much as you can. And you can make a lightweight feel surprisingly difficult by implementing all of these things. If you still need something a little bit more difficult, if you've added those variations, you can also do things like deficit lunges. So deficit lunges are a great option. You don't have to do them on a proper step. You can do them on like literally stairs, just anything sturdy that can increase your range of motion. So the increased range of motion makes the exercise more difficult. So that is why it's a really good one to do at home with minimal equipment. Split squats are another great one because split squats are just difficult in general. So if you're good at them, if you just do high rep pulse squat, pulse split squats or like high rep paused split squats, even with body weight, like that would be death. So you can definitely have a good, difficult workout. Same as with even pistol squats. Those are a super difficult exercise. And if you're stuck with minimal equipment, why not master a crazy good exercise like that? It isn't really a glute exercise, but it's still adding to your overall lower body development, which is just gonna help the overall look of your glutes. Hip thrusts are another awesome lower body exercise. You could stick to regular old hip thrusts. And of course you can apply all of those previous difficulty techniques to the hip thrust in order to make it feel more difficult if you don't have much weight. Some other things you can do is a B stance variation, single leg feet elevated or single leg feet elevated. Again, each of those are harder. Like B stance is harder than double leg, but single leg is harder than B stance. So you can try these out and progress accordingly. So another example of a compound movement is deadlifts. So if you have light dumbbells, a Romanian deadlift can be, is a good option because you can't really do full on deadlifts with light dumbbells. But again, really keep that control and you can still have a, a killer workout. Now you could also do B stance Romanian deadlifts. So that's gonna put one focus on one leg a little more, or you can even do the single leg Romanian deadlifts. So again, it's kind of going up in a progression because the balance for the single leg is pretty difficult. And those are some key exercises. Of course, that's not it. You can still add some isolation movements in as well, but those are some key examples of good compound lower body movements. Okay, and the last tip is to give it consistency and time. Like I said, the glutes are fat and muscle. The more muscle you build, the leaner you can be while maintaining more glutes unless you have amazing genetics and you just keep your fat in your glutes then lucky you but for everyone else the more muscle you build the better it will maintain so that just means that's going to take time muscle really does take time to build and of course you'll see small improvements on the way but to really make significant progress you got to stick to all these things over the long term Alrighty, and that is going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the links in the description box below for information on coaching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!